أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم وأبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters I begin by praising Allah عز وجل and I bear witness that none had the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his last prophet and messenger. And we all ask Allah Azza wa to send his peace and blessings upon him. The prophets and messengers that came before him, his family, his companions, and all who followed his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah for us to be among them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, almost half of Ramadan is over. And indeed how quickly Ramadan has come and gone. At least half of it. And now it's time to think how we are going to make the second half of Ramadan, inshallah, much, much better than the first half of Ramadan. But this Ramadan is no doubt an exceptional one. We are all living in Ramadan feeling the sadness, feeling the weight of what's happening for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We are living in Ramadan while our Ummah is overwhelmingly in pain at the point it is in the emergency room. Our ummah is in the ER. So how can we relate the remaining of Ramadan to, what's, to what we are living now? Can Ramadan f 
filled of heartbreak, of sadness, be the best Ramadan of your life? This is an important question. And what we don't, I don't want to happen, and we don't want to happen, that you waste Ramadan because of, you, of your sadness. And you say to yourself, okay, I, can, I cannot enjoy this Ramadan because of what's happening in Gaza. So let's focus on the next one. And this is very dangerous. You're wasting a very important blessing and opportunity. Rather, everything is happening in Gaza now should be a reason for this Ramadan to be the best Ramadan of your life. Everything happening in Gaza now should be a reason to drive you and all the Ummah closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Why this? Because everything we are doing in this Ramadan, every worship we are doing in this Ramadan should have a different meaning, a different taste that we used to have before. And I will give you three examples for this. The first one is about our dua and our tahajjud in Ramadan. We should use all those emotions, all this pain to drive us closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. So maybe you are making dua in Ramadan before iftar or during taraweeh and you are crying for your brothers and sisters in Gaza while you cannot cry for yourself. So use those tears, use this pain to bring you closer to Allah. Use this bouquet to bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the essence of spirituality. Spirituality is not about happiness or a moment of joy. Or you can read whatever or as much as you can from the, the Quran and then nothing changes in your life or, or in the community life. So this moment can bring you this Ramadan and this pain and this dua with the pain in your heart can bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And maybe you are seeing the videos coming from Gaza and you feel pain to the point you cannot sleep. And I've heard it from many brothers. I cannot sleep. And maybe you are not used, you are used to pray taraweeh and you go home and sleep. And you don't pray tahajjud at the last third of the night. So maybe when you remember those video clips from Gaza and you cannot find sleep, you wake up and you go to pray in front of Allah and you say, at the, pro uh, the Prophet Jacob was saying, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I only complain my grief and my sufferings to Allah Azza wa Jal. To Allah alone we complain and حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل So Allah Azza wa Jal is pushing us in this Ramadan to a different level of worship different level of taste, different level of meaning. The second thing is our reading for Quran. We used to read Quran in the Ramadans before. But reading Quran in this Ramadan should have a different understanding, should have a different meaning. Why? Because we are seeing the verses we are reading in Quran as a living example in Gaza. So when we read in the chapter of Baqarah, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَهِ رَاجِعُونَ And we look to what's happening in Gaza. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, bring glad tidings for patient people. That when they face calamity, they say, to Allah we belong, and to Him we shall return. And we are seeing in the people of Gaza an example for this. They took the patient 
the steadfastness, the steadfastness, the resilience to a completely different level we have never known before. <coughs> the third thing, even when we are breaking our fast in Ramadan and we have food on our table in this Ramadan, it has a different taste. It has a different meaning. Because when you look to the food on your table, you remember your brothers and sisters in Gaza that go to find food for their children and then return in bags and then return in shreds. So if you lose your appetite for your food when you remember your brothers and sisters in Gaza, you now understand that the food on your table is not to fill your stomach. The food you, for you, on your table is only to break your fast. And if you lose your appetite for this world after what you have seen in Gaza, you have now reached the wisdom of this fasting. Fasting is meant to diminish your appetite of this world. And you only understand the volume of this dunya when you lose your appetite and you see how this world is reacting with what, with what is happening and unfolding in Gaza. All of this, brothers and sisters, can make this Ramadan at, at a completely different level of spirituality. Only by worshipping Allah through the pain and the grief in our hearts, we can bring our relation with Allah to a, complete, to a completely different level. Our khushu'a, our submissiveness, our humblessness in front of Allah, our tadallul to Allah to, to a completely different level. And all this can make this Ramadan the best Ramadan in your life, insha'Allah. I say this word, and I thank the Lord for you, and I thank you for your support, and you are in the Lord. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, in the first part, I mentioned to you three examples of how you can use, channel, or channel those emotions we are all feeling to bring us closer to Allah Azza and, uh, and now I will mention to you three things you can do in the remaining days of Ramadan that can bring you closer to Allah Azza The first thing أن تعبد الله كأنك ترى. Fasting is bringing us to this recipe. Fasting is bringing us to this depth of perception. Fasting is meant to unveil God consciousness, تقوى in our heart. لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات. And by fasting. By leaving the food and drink, leaving the sins, the pain in your heart, the sense of helplessness, all this can bring you to the status of taqwa and then to a highest status of excellence, al-ihsan. أن تعبد الله كأنك ترى. This can bring you closer and closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla. The second thing is what the Prophet Sallallahu said. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said None of you is a true believer if he doesn't love, if he doesn't like to his brother as he likes to himself, as he loves to himself, to himself. So now you should think about your brothers and sisters in Gaza and perceive them with a different eye. 
You should think about every man, every brother in Gaza, as if, he, as if it, was, it was you. And the children suffering in Gaza and dying in Gaza, as if they were your children. And the mother crying from the pain and grief, as if she is your mother. And then see how you are going to respond for the crisis. The third thing is no life except the life in the hereafter. And you know what this, this was the slogan of the companions when we were they digging the trench, when they were sieged in the battle of the trench, as Gaza is sieged now. And Ramadan, as we said, is meant to diminish the appetite for this dunya, diminish your appetite for this dunya, bring you closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, bring you closer to the hereafter, and bring taqwa in your heart. So dear brothers and sisters, I have a challenge for you and for myself in this Ramadan. We need to try to challenge ourselves in the remaining days of Ramadan. Every day in Ramadan, you are waking in the morning, try to imagine yourself, you are not waking in Oakville or in Mississauga or in Toronto. Try to imagine that you are waking up in Rafah, in northern Gaza, in Palestine. What are you going to do as the fasting Muslim? When you are breaking your fast, try to imagine how, how are your brothers in Gaza fasting? They don't have what they break their fast. They don't have nothing on, on their iftar. So how, uh, how they are going to break their fast, how they are going to fast if they, if they are not breaking their fast? This is the way we can change our perception to this Ramadan. This is the way we can make Ramadan while our ummah is in the emergency room, as we said from pain, the best Ramadan we have. The closest Ramadan for us to Allah Azza wa Jal. We can bring us ourselves closer to Allah Azza wa Jal by worshiping, worshiping Allah through this pain, through this suffering, and change what's happening to ourselves, to our lives, and to our ummah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to alleviate the pain and the sufferings of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant them victory over their oppressors. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give them a special victory in these special months, very special months. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept all our good deeds, to change what's happening to us and to our ummah, to accept our dua, our reading of Quran, and our charity for him, and our tahajjud, and our taraweeh in Ramadan. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal an yansura ahlana fi Gaza, wa an yufarrij karbahum, wa an yaj'al lahum mimma hum fihi farajan wa makhrajan, wa an yaj'al shahra Ramadan shahra fathin mubin lahum, wa li ikhwanina al-mustadafina fi kulli biqa' al-ard. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر